Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Cornelius covers homework on the subject of recognizing addictions in relationships, filmed on the 2nd of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Alrighty then, I'm ready to rock and roll for the next session. What we're going to talk about with you today is the homework that you've done from the other day. We're just the um, recognizing addictions and relationships homework. We we'll just do a little revision of that too. So we learn what do my addictions feel like. So someone just give me a quick answer for that one with the mics, hands up. Yep. Um, Tess, I think it is. Compulsive. Yes. Uh, Miranda? It feels like right. Beg your pardon? It feels right. Like justified. The right like thing a... to do. Yeah, justified. Uh, what's, uh, okay, we'll look over that one. Uh, next, Max? I feel sleazy. Uh, nope. No? <laughs> um, down the, f yeah, a cheddar at the back there. Um, like a full body rush. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. A rush. Um, I can't think of your name. <laughs> Rebecca. Mel. Uh, I feel good when they're met, being met. Yeah. What's the real feeling like? Um, the feel that the energy that's rushing through your system. What does that feel like? Like an urgency or a, that the compulsion. You get the yep. compulsion we had before. I'll just go through it. <laughs> shorter times. Like yeah, the frenzy, and the fatuation, mm. just obsession. Like just gotta have it. A real like, ugh. So next, that's before we meet them. What is it when I meet them? What feeling is your addiction feel like? Ken? Ken, satisfied? Yep. Just pass back to you to, yes. <laughs> like I'm loved. Yep, definitely. That's basically what we're after, isn't it? Yeah, I'll just move on with that because it's pretty much the good answer that you're after. When do they not get met? What does it feel like? Marco? Like frustrated and angry. Yeah, yep. definitely. Yep. And just up the back to Lani. Lani? Yeah. Um, real desperation. When they don't get met? And we need another one to go and find another one straight away. Well, we get desperate that we have to get them met, and so yeah, we that's just correct. start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just over to Andrew. Andrew, um, unworthy. Yeah, you can feel pretty unworthy. What's a real... Um, I just start very angry generally and just... just like um, disdain feelings coming up for us and just like uh, that sort of feeling. <laughs> so I'll just keep moving on now. When I become conscious that I've been living in them and wanting them, what's it like? This is the one you had a bit of trouble with because many of you haven't got to that. So can you remember some of the examples we gave you there? Um, Jetta maybe at the back there? I just get like this real sinking feeling, like knowing how bad these things yeah, have been Yeah, it's a shock almost. Yeah, a real shock. Yeah. Um, so I'm over this side. Dennis, up the back there. Sleazy. Yep. And maybe where we go to Cardi in the middle there. Uh, Self-blame. Beg your pardon? Self-blame. Um, like I, I don't want to know. That's an that addiction in itself, so it's not really, no. Nah. It's just another addiction we're adding on to it to get us away from the feeling we need to feel about it. Mm. Yep, so just pass next door to you there, the Trent. Yeah, icky. Icky, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's horrible, sort of like, and not good about what you've done. Quite ashamed. Yeah. So what does it feel like when I'm in a codependency, which is every relation on the planet, every relationship? So well, what is a codependency? It might make it easy for you. So Susan? Did you have your hand up? Sorry, I it's, it's demanding. 
Yeah, so what is a codependency? Just so you get an idea of that, the definition for it. Somebody, um, Gary out the back there, then Phoebe over the side here. Uh, it's an emotional um, bartering system to get your addictions met. Yeah, trying to get one from, like, both of you getting good feelings from each other, basically, trying to keep each other away from the bad feelings. Yeah, I'll... That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's emotional prostitution, basically, is what we learned, that, if you put it into more direct terms. So what's it like when I'm actually abusing others? What does that feeling feel like? Um, Ken? Can uh, um, power? Yep, power. definitely. That's what it's all about, isn't it? And control. I mean, we're happy to manipulate and coerce people. So, what are these feelings like when I'm in a relationship? Yep, Michael. Very sleazy. Well, sometimes they feel pretty good, don't they? Too. Yeah. Um, Grant? Um, <coughs> normal. Beg your pardon? Normal. No, yeah, exactly. They feel quite normal. Like that's the way the world works. We're quite like believing in them. We can keep moving on. So why do I have no interest in developing a relationship with God and only have an interest in relationships with people? Um, what's your name? Chris. Because we can't see God, and he seems unreachable. Why do you, I'll, no, I'll just keep going on with that one. Next one, um, Daniel at the back there. Um, I believe I can't feel God, but people are dependable and predictable and and they give familiar. you. Give me my addictions. Yes. They give me the good feeling. People give us addictions. our addictions. That's yeah. why we do not want a relationship with God because people are going to give it to us now, straight away. You don't have to do any work for them, just about. You might have to sell a bit of yourself and stuff like that. And, but that's easy. Give that up any time. But to have a relationship with God is going to be very challenging. And we don't. The whole idea of addictions is we don't want our emotions challenged. So that's why we do not want a relationship with God. John. <laughs> That'll be the first real relationship we ever had. Which is that? People? No. God. No, we haven't had a relationship with God yet. No, but what I'm saying is when we have a relationship with God, it'll be the first real relationship we ever have. Yeah. Well, first we'll have one with ourselves, I think, too. We'll start to be, it'll be sort of hopefully together. So, let's go to the homework. First question was, write down every time you felt compelled, obsessed, infatuated, in a frenzy. Okay, Jane, what did you come up with? I'm just going to go through these two. This is your expression. Thanks, Jane. Um, I really felt compelled, especially this week, just to justify my fear. Mm -hmm. Each time, because I'm just wanting to avoid it so yep, much. Desperate to get away from it. Yep. Yeah. It's a whole idea of addictions, eh? <laughs> Let's pass across to. I'm blank of names. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Sandra. So, and that's uh, it. My addiction is huge, and I project a lot of rage at both my partners and the women they interact with because I feel so in a frenzy. And what jealous, are you? The jealous feeling. You're trying to get. Power and control over so, yeah, the situation so and the people. Power. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alex, uh, I feel I felt compelled to run away from conversation. So w within conversation, uh, I'd, it'd get to a point where suddenly I want to want to get away from this. You're out of there. Yeah. Um, to Glenn, it's just in front of you. I went into a frenzy when I had to do something by a certain time and I didn't really want to do it, but I didn't recognise that it was an addiction until after I'd done it. Have you got one for relationships, if we can, so um, on that subject? I'm um, sorry. Yeah, I just really? wrote down when I was feeling compelled. That's all right. I'm sorry. Uh, next over this side, anybody? 
I write a curse society. Maybe you say your name too, Kevin. It's the first time you've said something. Michaela. Yeah. Um, I feel in a frenzy when the person I'm talking to doesn't show me that they like me. Yeah, so trying to get an addiction, trying to get liked. Yeah. Uh huh. <clears throat> yes. Um, yes, you do. <laughs> I'm bad with names. I wrote down a number of relationships where I felt that, um, and was the first one was when someone made love to me and uh, it was amazing and I like you know it was that initial rush thingy but the other ones I noticed that whenever I thought I was going to lose that person I would go into this and that's a very very big one like for everybody on the planet that's the most reason why you stay in relationships and codependent relationships because you're just afraid of losing the relationship, the thing that's trying to keep all your addictions fed. I'm just terrified and the compulsions are massive to try and keep the relationship. It's a huge because it's big feelings underneath it. And then I, I saw how I would just do awful things to get that, you know, person back, like some mm, manipulation. But it doesn't matter. You've got to just go do them, eh? It's a compulsion. Yeah. 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 Anto? Just across Betty and Phoebe. I just feel a lot of the times in a relationship with Jane, I just feel like I want to control every single thing. And sometimes I feel uh, to compromise, but it's more to get something met for myself. So it's, it's a real control. It's a certain situations, though, that you get the compulsions? Or that the need to get a... Yeah, um, where I don't have to look after myself in terms mm. of the basic needs. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, where I want something that I feel like I don't want to do it for myself. It's just I'm too tired. Anto, can you put the microphone close to your mouth? Oh. Yeah. yeah, situations where I feel like I've worked all day. I'm tired, so now I just expect it. So, um, and if it's not there, then I get really anxious about it. And but I won't do anything about it for myself either. So. Mm. Okay, and Phoebe. Um, at times I've, in relationships, I've felt compelled to like do horrible things like look through my partner's phone or emails like, and I'm not going to rest until I know like what's there. Yeah. It's like this intense feeling uh -huh. there. Yep, that's very common I think too. <laughs> um, we'll go down up the back to Rita first and come down the front to Ali. Rita. <clears throat> I feel compelled to do something for people and help people and it used to feel good but since I'm here I only, know, I only notice it afterwards that I have been doing it again and then it doesn't feel good anymore. I'm not going to stop you there. That's not correct. It's not, it's true. not correct. Okay. No. You, you'll do things for yourself in addictions, these compulsions. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I mean, wanna, if wanna it, it is an addiction other, You want to say they're for that. other people, but they're actually for your, you're seeing them for yourself, you're doing a good thing for yourself, but it's for them. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, you'd think you're doing it for no. them, but you're trying to get the feeling out of it. Yeah, I yeah. wanted, I want, I, maybe I said it, or I wanted to say, I do things, my addiction is to do things for people and feel good about myself afterwards. But right now, since I'm here... But I'm saying it, it's not for other people. It is always for yourself. It, it is, yeah, it's always... I. Yeah, I. That's a compulsion. You don't care about the other people so much because you know no, you're getting it for yourself. To to make yeah. me feel good. You got to start seeing that's what it's for. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, where were we down here, Thalia? Yeah, um, I pretty much experienced all of those things in a lot of different areas of my life, including physical addictions from like substance abuse to even religion, uh, music, anything that I've ever sort of found in my life I've taken it to the extreme and and really like become yeah obsessed and infatuated with it all mm. relationships even relationships yes definitely any particular thing in relationships this happens oh yeah um I can definitely relate to the uh you know towards the end of a relationship getting obsessed with uh who are they speaking to like checking their phones and you know going through the like even phone bill, I remember that once, going through a phone bill and seeing what number they like, yeah, called or that. texted. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. All, of, all of the above for yeah, sure. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, where were we next? I haven't picked one, have I? 
Um, just down the back, is it Pamela? And anybody this side? Just down the front here, is it Nick? Uh, Pamela, I have a compulsion to put my point of view across um, because I feel I need to be understood, I need to be mm -hmm. recognised. I Yeah. Yep, yeah. big addiction. Yeah. Uh, Peter, and compelled to make women feel good. Yeah, that's a pretty big in that. Mm. <laughs> I think most guys are on that one. <laughs> um, just in Glenda. And anybody this side still? Ange? Go ahead, Glenda. Yesterday I felt quite a, a couple of very contradictory addictions. Firstly, I recognise that at times in this group I feel a disconnection, not wanting to talk to people, which is probably a denial of my anger. Mm -hmm. But then I walked past somebody's home and heard them talking and I felt jealous I wasn't included. Um, and there was a real physical pang, like I want to be included in everything to feel as if I belonged, feel as if I loved. So what's the compulsion or the frenzy to do? The, in the need to be loved. Just in relationships or just in general life? Or? Well, with relationships with anybody, not particularly a, a male. So you're compelled to do anything to get loved. Is that what you're saying? Or? Well, there was a jealousy there because I wasn't included. Um, so that to me is an addiction to, to feeling loved. What do you do then? What's your compulsion to get out of that horrible feeling? If I act on the addiction, I would go and join them uh -huh. um, and, and make myself included. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, where were we? Yeah, Connie. Sorry, yeah. Um, my biggest um, addiction um, was to defend and argue and defend, basically, my uh -huh. position. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I guess we'll keep going on, right on the next one in a minute. Um, just got to keep going a bit faster here today. Um, all these things you've written down, it's good to note all these things because it's going to give you a really big clue into what you're running from. Because these things are just desperate to get away from something. Desperate, desperate, desperate to get away from a feeling. So if you look through your lists, you'll start to see what you're actually trying to get away from. That's what you need to find. So you get not run from it, but to go and find it. Then you'll start knowing where you are on the map that you learned about today. <laughs> AJ? Courtney, can I just say that for this group, they're not looking at their addictions about rage. Like they have. Mm like no one's really mentioned how addicted they are to their rage, mm. to their anger, what, you know, and I feel that's a big problem for this group though. Most of them, most particularly again, the ladies, very, very addicted to their rage. They want to retain their rage. It gives them a sense of power and control and, the, and they're totally addicted to just being enraged in situations that, that don't warrant any anger at all, in fact but they are enraged in most cases. Mm. So like before, I feel when Pamela mentioned some of her addictions, really it's just rage, Pamela. Like it's not, it's not neediness and all those things, it's rage coming out of you. It's like you're addicted to the rage and, and I feel for yourself, Glenda, it's the same, you're just addicted to the rage. Like, so I, f I feel a lot of these answers are still not that sincere. Mm. You're, you're not looking, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the the emotion underneath rather than just feel the addiction that's on top. So, you know, you're not going to find what you're really angry about. You're just going to be guessing what you're really angry about unless you feel that you're really angry. Do you see? And you like it. You like being really angry. It, it, what does it give you? Well, when you feel really angry and you feel the addiction, as Mary will point out to you in the next section, then you will feel what it's about then. But at the moment, there's just a lot of guessing going on, not really feeling that top layer of addiction. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Uh, Lani? Um, I think I'm addicted to blame. I always blame my partner and it's always the other person's fault, but don't look at myself. Yeah, what are some of the things that happened before it? What you're trying to run away from? Oh, I'm 
no. It, it's all right. I don't have to answer. Just have a think yeah. about that. So yeah. don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah. I'm going to keep moving on to the next one. That might help you. Um, write down what you do when. There's two parts to this one. You satisfy the compulsion is one of them. So we'll start with that one. So, Michael? You feel happy and loved and relieved and satisfied. <laughs> yeah. It's a big one, isn't it? Especially the loved one. That's what we're trying to chase the whole time, isn't it? That loved feeling. Um, Pam is there. Everybody over this side next. And Brenda. <laughs> Just trying to find a way. Yeah, she's in a hot spot. <laughs> I'm totally in control again. What's that again, sorry? I'm totally in control again. Yep, exactly. It's all... Yes. Uh, where were we? Brenda? Yes. Uh, Brenda, I feel worthy and deserving. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got to do Sir Hiroko. Hiroko, yep. Hiroko, um, I give the person rewards, so it keep coming. Give What's it, that again? I give the person who give me my satisfy my my um compulsion feeling i give the person reward so it's coming back again so i'm making a pet i can't really understand sorry <laughs> can someone reward. reward oh yeah sorry thank you <laughs> yeah it does feel like that yeah, yeah. We've got a little reward i feel good again yep yeah. uh we spoke to alan on the side here and where are we going to Bruce down here, thanks. Uh, Alan, I feel supported that I was right. Supported that. That I was right in my compulsion. Yeah, that yeah, that yeah. relief feel, feeling. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've got, got yeah. this right, this addiction yeah, got stuff right. is pretty I'll, good. I'll do yeah. that again next time. Yeah, it happens a lot. Uh, Bruce? Uh, I feel like I've... Um, uh, avoided um, the anger of my partner. When you, you know, go through it, when you I, do when something I give her what I want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I give her what I, she yeah. wants, I avoid the anger. Yeah. I've, Just good. laughing because I know that one very well. <laughs> um, we go to, where are we? We have one, Renee. And just down the front here. I don't know your name, sorry. I'll find out in a minute with the mic. Renee, I feel really, really happy and content. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite... Um, I'm, I'm in quite a lot of shock by doing this with just seeing mm -hmm. how... Well, intellectually, I can see. Mm -mm. No? No. That I'm in a lot of denial. Yeah, in that point, completely, when you're in addictions. Oh, um, before... When you satisfy the compulsion, when the compulsion is satisfied, what does it feel like? I feel complete. Yeah, it's more like it. Cheryl, I yeah, felt Cheryl. Um, safe and justified yeah. by satisfying the compulsion. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. Um, where are we going to... Yeah, there I was getting there. And Rose, is it? Kadira, I think um, sometimes I can feel vindicated, like I'm right, yeah. I was right. Pretty certain. Um, Rose? Rose. When I feel the satisfaction, the compulsion, it's like I'm, I'm feeling very satisfied that I've been successful in convincing them that I'm the one they need and then I feel I belong. Mm-hmm. Um, Allah, in the front here, and run at the back there, is it? Oh, Dom. I feel very proud of myself. Yeah, that happens a lot, doesn't it? And Dom, uh, in the back. Uh, Don. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, when my wife is expressing a need to be met, I go straight ahead and do that. How do you and feel when you've done it? So I feel um, uh, happy that I've satisfied the need, but it could be a foundation for anger that later on gets expressed. Yeah. What do you get out of it when you do it, though? There's a feeling that comes up when I've done it, 
Yes. I, I feel. So it's okay if you don't know. It's a little thing about um, it. But it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, just give us some thought. Um, what's your name again? I couldn't hear it, but I'll hear it on the mic. <laughs> Thanks. And over this side, right, your name over there. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, I uh, yes. feel energised. Yeah, pretty pumped. Yeah, yeah. Think it works. Yeah. And we're just going to go over to the side here. Maxine. Maxine, yeah. Um, when I'm in my anger and rage, after that satisfaction, I feel furia. In I feel furia. Like uh, I'm like much. Oh, superior. Su superior. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> like <it>. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense now. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rob, down here, and it's just up the back. I don't know if this has been said, but I feel safe. Uh huh. Yeah, we said that. And just up the back. Sorry, I've just gone blank. You're going to say the same thing, were you? No. Uh, I've gone blank. <laughs> oh no! In control. Yeah. Back in control. Life's back in control now. Uh huh. And just to pass in front of you if you can, that'd be good. Mel, I feel wanted and busy. It keeps my life busy. Uh huh. So you don't have to feel anything yeah, else. Yeah, alone. Don't have to feel the loneliness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll take a few more, Brendan. And Pierre down the front. Yeah. Thanks, Brendan. Um, just, just feel the feeling of relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just down over here. I feel I'm ready to satisfy your addiction. A new I'm, one. Yeah, I'm. I'm so happy. I'm ready to satisfy yeah, whatever you want. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Rosa, is it down here? Yeah. Sometimes when I get angry, I get results. So with the kids, if I raise my voice, that's the only way <laughs> they listen. So yeah, I feel so, I got the result. So and control, is it the feeling of No, that I got the result that I wanted, whatever, because mostly happens when I'm in a short time frame mm -hmm. that I have to leave or I have to, and that's the only time where I feel that they, I get their attention, yeah. so. Yeah. Mm. Um, Oh, there's one right in the corner there, yep. Anybody else this side? Lorraine? Rebecca, um, I feel safe and I feel that I'm being looked after. Sort mm -hmm. of like the, um, like the responsibility of the situations being looked after, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, yeah. The fear, has, the fear you had before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been looked after. Well, um, I ignore the real feeling and I present a facade. So when the compulsion, you satisfy the compulsion, what so, happens? So then I, I, um, I, I might be bothered by something, but because the compulsion is met, I then don't want to feel whatever I was feeling and then I just pretend something else. So it feels... Yeah, it's, it's okay, even though in the beginning it might have been not okay, but then I suddenly say, oh, it's okay. Because yeah. I thought what so I wanted. So everything feels okay again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ken, and then Laura next to, after that one, and then Jedda up the back once you're done there. Actually, we'll go to and Carol after that too on this side. Ken, I feel love and loved by my partner. Mm hmm Rewarded. Laura. Yeah. Um. Laura. I feel uh, like really righteous, like that's how it should be. You know, yeah. you just met my addiction, and yeah. um, and and that's just exactly what you should have done. You know, yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jenna, up the back yeah. here. Um, I like I, I feel really good, and then I feel it's like a guilty feeling, and then a self punishment, and then somehow I'm able to get back in and do it again. Yeah. Like yeah, somehow I just rationalise it. Like I punish myself now, and it's okay to do it again. I think mm. it feels okay. It feels because you've got a belief in the system. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. And we had uh, Carol. Oops. Carol, um, having separated, um, mm. there was an obsession to keep a connection going, and when that connection was opened, I'd feel uh, grounded as well as all the other good feelings. 
-hmm. And then when it closed again, I'd go back into more obsession and and jealousy and (laughs) panic and rage and needing to... um, Get it back to the status quo again. Yes, (laughs) so that he knows that I'm right. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. All right, we'll go on to the next part of this. So write down what you do when the compulsion is not satisfied. Uh, Trent? And somebody else hasn't been... Uh, yes, yes. Chris? Yeah. So over here, Trent. Yep, get frustrated and angry. Yep, definitely. Chris, on this side. Um, manipulate and try and get it met. So compulsion is not satisfied. You try and say that's your action, is it? To, you manipulate to try and get it met. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel when it's met then? Truly. Satisfied. Oh, it's not met, sorry, isn't it? Yeah, we're going yeah. for not satisfied. So you feel mm-hmm. manipulated. Well, actually, I'll let you when answer. It's not satisfied, um, unloved, yeah, and that's uncared that's for. Mm. Yep, and just want to pass it back to um, Dan. And on this side to Dennis, thanks. If, it, if it's not satisfied and I'm unwilling to feel, I'll automatically find something to distract me. Yep. Yeah. And Dennis, over the side here. So uncomfortable, could have found another one to replace what it wasn't there. Mm-hmm. And Jules, over the side here, and then to Kathleen, is that right? It's Catherine. Catherine is close. <laughs> hi, hi, so, Jules. Who are you on now? We'll go to you, Jules, yeah. Uh, thanks, Hello. Colin. Um, yeah, I, st- I feel hurt from mild to deeply, and then I go into emotional turmoil. Yeah, it's a bit out of control again. Yeah, out of control. Mm. Yeah, and that brings in rage. Yeah. Catherine? I feel agitated and in a frenzy again. Yeah. Exactly the same as. Yeah. What it was to begin with. Trying to get away from the bad feelings that we had at the beginning, and they're all coming back up again. What do you do? Go back in the addictions and compulsions again? I'm um, sorry, um, who are we after? Uh, Linda, there. And just keep your hand up, yeah. And um, um, Brenda. Uh, uh, Linda, I feel rejected and, and like it's my fault. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Brenda, um, I feel lonely and sad yeah. and very distant from my partner. Uh-huh. And Alan on this side and Michael over here. Uh, Alan, I um, freak out first, uh, <laughs> reflect and then blame everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Unhappy pain and anxiety. Sorry again, Michael. Unhappy pain and anxiety. Uh huh. Yep. And I might just pass it over to Andrew, is it there? And on this side, come down to Cardi. Andrew, um, I feel unworthy. Yeah. Unloved. Mm hmm. I'm just going to go to Cardi here. Um, sometimes livid or then despair. Yeah. If it sounds like a good one, <laughs> yeah, that's how you, and despair you said as well. Yeah. Let's pass it back to Jane over there. Do they have somebody on this side or not? No, I've done that. Um, hands up. Glenda? I'll go to Jane first though. Yeah. Jane, um, I feel it's unjust, really unjustified. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> angry with that too. And Glenda over here? Um, I get demanding and blame. And feel angry, and then I usually go into a discussion about how, what, why you haven't done it, how unloved I feel. Mm, so to then I try the and back into where you want it. Yeah. yeah, to agree to me to do yeah. it. <laughs> and did you have a Max? Yeah, just in front of you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I feel angry, rejected, and then I sulk. Sulk, sulky? Did you say? Sulk. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> good one. Um, Ken down here. And Susan up the back. Ken, I feel resentful and very angry or rage. Yeah. 
I feel Susan over here. Sorry, it's Yes, yeah, Susan. I, I feel punished and that I'm really naughty and bad and and then I try and justify it and fight back. <laughs> so it's like it's an addiction already to try and Addiction of resistance and denial and yeah. 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 Okay. Um, take one more either side, then we'll go on to the next one so we get moving on. Um, uh, <laughs> a couple of name again. I feel like I want to punish the other person and actually feel very vindictive the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I just stay in that theming. And Lorleen over the side. Now we'll get on to the next question. Uh, I often deny that I'm angry and get into passive aggression. Mm -hmm. So right now, we'll move on to the next one. Write down what frustrates you about your relationship with God. Michael, over here, and um, Madeira. Yeah. So Michael first. Not being sure that I've got the exact connection with God. Yeah. It feels hard. Hard, yeah. yeah. Um, just come down to El Jeddah first and then have to Gary at the back there too. That God doesn't meet my addictions. It just frustrates me. It's frustrating, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's only what people who meet their addictions. Uh, Gary at the back. Yeah, uh, can't see, can't feel him. He doesn't talk back to me. Um, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, um, very frustrating. I can't, can't feel you know, that there's a person there, you know, so mm. it's, yeah, I just want God to be like a, another person. human, yeah. like, relationship, but uh -huh. it's, yeah, there's no addictions met, so I can't feel it. Uh -huh. So, come down to Justin down the front here, and over this side to Jane. Uh, God doesn't support my self-righteous position. <laughs> And we're going to Jane over this side. I'll just come down to her. Yeah. Thanks, Jane. Um, I, what I'm frustrated about, it feels like there's so many steps and um, and it's just not unattainable at this stage. It's a lot of effort and no reward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nikki down the front. Uh, instant gratification and impatience, I guess. So that's what frustrates you, can't get the instant gratification. Yeah. And just back to Ivana, I'm also going straight to you. I feel like I have to do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <There's not> Damn it. <laughs> no, but I don't uh, still feel like I don't feel good. So. Mm. Um, Max here. And then Trent over here. A lack of faith in God and a lack of faith in myself that I'd, I'm able to that I'm able to recognise um, when when he's trying to talk to me, mm -hmm. in, in like through um, uh, law of attraction, things like that. Mm. Okay, and we're on to Trent here. Yes. Yeah, I'm frustrated that I don't have a relationship with God yet. Frustrated? Why? That I don't have a relationship with God. So. Yeah, that's right down. What frustrates you about it? But what is it? That I don't have it. That's what. Frustrates me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, where are we going to? We're going to Phoebe just up the back and over here just to Laura. Did you have one there? Laura. I just really want to be able to throw a tantrum and get love in return. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> now to Laura. Yeah, uh, Laura. Um, I'm actually really pissed off that um, that all this stuff's inside of me, and I want. I want to blame God. I want to blame my mom and dad, my everything. I want to blame everyone but myself. I don't want to take any responsibility for that stuff inside me, but I want God to fix it. Yeah, now we're getting to it. Yeah. <laughs> I want him to fix real. it now. Yeah. Um, to just to Jules, up as you go that way, do we have one here to Bruce? And then down, down, down to Marco. So um, Jules. Yeah. Jules. I know intellectually that I need to feel my emotions um, to grow closer to God, but they're like summer showers. Mm. So, yeah, until I really will go into the emotions, they just come, dabble, so and then move on. So what's frustrating you about it's the emotions? Yeah, it's frustrating me, Corny, because um, the emotions 
um, aren't taking me down deeper, so they're just peripheral. So once I start feeling my emotions more, I'll open up more to God. But at the moment, I know it's just intellectual. So I'm frustrated. It's frustrated that you have to feel emotions. Yes, to get there. <laughs> I'm frustrated at that. I'm frustrated that they're only so small. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Bruce, yeah? Why he allows so, uh, so many unloving things to happen to me. Mm hmm. Yeah, very big one. And Marco down the front here? I guess the frustration is about not actually knowing the education right from the start. Mm -hmm. from school and, and uh, now knowing that the truth about God and sort of improvising everything and deconstructing all those years, and it frustrates me a lot. Mm. Now you do, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> now you do, you have a bit of education, yeah, what are you exactly, going to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. So, Rita up the back and Lani. <clears throat> Rita, I feel that he is not available and he's not there like my parents weren't there yeah. and weren't emotionally available. We were always busy. A lot of our emotions get placed upon God, don't they, from our parents? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to, where do we go, Lani? Just over here. Yeah, um, I'm frustrated that I have to be willing to feel my pain. Uh, yeah. I, you know, and so it's much not, of it. That's how you're going to have the relationship with God in the end, isn't it? Yeah, as you go through that. And just go next to you to, um, oh, yeah, yeah, actually, Alex will be good, yeah. Uh, I feel frustrated that my experience of divine love isn't intense enough. I feel like it should sort of blow me away, and it's uh, it doesn't. It's not as good as the New Age theories and ways. Oh, uh, potentially. I uh, I sort of feel like the heart of my soul is damaged in a way that that makes makes means that. That's just how it is. So that's what frustrates you? It, yeah, okay. it's frustrating. Yeah, I think it's been a bit more sincerity for the, you have to feel about that question a bit more. Sure. Yeah, some really deep frustrations inside yourself you don't want to feel. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, could I just interject oh, there? Sorry, yeah. Connie. Alex, if you think about it, you and I have had a direct uh, email exchange about that very comment that you made about you feeling frustrated about God's love being intense enough for you. And in fact, I pointed out that that never happens. You're not experiencing God's love. If it's not overwhelming you, it's not happening. And it's actually arrogance upon your part to say that um, God's not overwhelming enough for you. And I, we have discussed that at length. Yeah, I, I do remember the email. Yeah. Obviously didn't go in though, hey? Didn't hit the heart. I guess not. Right, do you want to pass it just to Susan across there? And then to right at the back there, is it? Thank you, Tess. Tess, yeah. Um, that God wasn't there when I needed him the most. Mm -hmm. And Tess? Tess, um, a lot of confusion and not, like, not having clear... Just hold the mic, I can't quite hear. Um, a lot of confusion about how to do it and... Yeah, the world's full of it about God, isn't there? Confusion. <laughs> and it can be very frustrating. I'll just take two more, then we'll wind up. Um, Rob and, and Pam. Uh, I feel like I'm the centre of the universe and God should make it easy for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Pam, you can get a shot there. My frustration is that the church told me so many lies about God and it wasn't about the love of God, it was about their system and, uh, and I can never have a relationship with God until I actually deal with those lies. So just hold a little bit closer. But I can't have a relationship with God until I deal with the lies that I've been told by the church. You're frustrated about the lies. Yes. Okay. Yeah, about the lies. All right, yeah. All right, thanks a lot for all your questions. It's just this is open for you today, and I wasn't going to say much, just to let you express yourself. Yeah, I'm um, going to wind up with something, but I can't quite remember what I was going to say. I'm just going to say be careful when you're going through a lot of your feelings too. You think you feel rather than actually you do feel in your heart. The things you write down, I've had to write down a little exercise I did years ago, about 10, 15 years ago. I write down things in my... Um, 
left hand, I think it was, and answering with my right hand. And sometimes my left hand would go, do you really feel that? A lot of times I catch myself out because I was just telling myself what I wanted to feel. It wasn't the truth. I need to know the truth. So just be careful on how you look at things in your life, how you feel about things. Make sure it's coming from your heart. So thank you, guys. Cheers.